Welcome. My name is Rob Richards. I am a project manager at Stotler Hanke Associates, where I assisted in the design of our critical change software, Aurora CCPM. This presentation provides an introduction to critical chain project management and assumes only a basic understanding of project management principles. This presentation is divided into three sections. The first is motivation and background. What is the motivation for looking for a different way of performing project management and some background on project management theory and practice? The second section is the problem, that is, what needs to be changed. The third section is the solution, that is, what to change to. Motivation for developing a new paradigm for project management. Projects have been known to be late. Here are a few widely quoted statistics about project success. Whatever the true situation may be, almost all who deal with projects and almost all studies indicate there is much need for improvement. Therefore, there is plenty of incentive to find a better method. This slide shows just a few success stories for those who have switched to critical chain. The slide presents a sampling of results for Lucent Technologies, Seagate and Lord Corporation. There are many other success stories. However, this sampling demonstrates what can be considered typical improvements experienced by companies that have implemented critical chain. Are you a responsible person when dealing with task duration estimates? What do you supply when you're asked for a task estimate? What do you assume is supplied to you when you ask someone else for a task estimate? Is only one number provided or given as a task estimate? Are probabilities normally supplied or given regarding task estimates? Is the three-point estimation technique utilized? Another important question is, how do you work once the task has started? Does work occur on the task as non-stop as possible, so the level of activity is relatively constant? Or is this task often interrupted so that there are many intervals when the task is not being worked on? Or is there an initial burst of activity at the beginning of the task and then due to interruption or other factors, the task is largely neglected until some deadline trigger forces one to return to the task? These points will be addressed further later in the presentation. Let us review the three-point estimation of task durations, as well as the general distribution of task durations during execution. First, let's look at the curve for describing how long tasks may actually take. Starting with the most optimistic estimate, there is a certain amount of effort, and therefore time, that must occur to complete a task. So the most optimistic estimate is the duration if everything went perfectly and there were no interruptions. In the illustration, this is 10 hours. The shape of the curve is due to the fact that there are a number of reasons that a task can go long. So if the pessimistic estimate was even greater than 25 hours in this illustration, the tail of this distribution would be even longer. By providing the three estimates, optimistic, most likely, and pessimistic, an overall curve can be established. A PERT duration for the task can be calculated. Critical chain does not use the PERT estimate, so the details of the calculation will not be described further here. This diagram illustrates the risk in asking for one estimate without clarifying what is being asked for. For example, if the recipient of the information assumed that the estimate was the pessimistic estimate, while the provider of the estimate assumed it was for the most likely estimate, it is obvious that this would cause problems. Now we will address the problem, that is, what needs to be changed. A major source of problems is localized risk management and subsequent problems that occur due to localized risk management. What is meant by localized risk management is, it is assumed that for the project to finish on time, each of the tasks need to have a high probability of finishing on time. So returning to the issue of task estimates, how safe is safe enough for individual tasks? In standard project management, 
each task need to finish on time, so therefore the task duration needs to be estimated where there is a high confidence of this occurring. So the estimates are biased towards the 90% confidence level. Then, as we have seen previously, this can be much longer than the 50% confidence task estimate. Unfortunately, by allowing for these, quote, safe estimates, unquote, many bad habits are promoted, which in many cases result in the task taking longer than even the safe estimate. The student syndrome describes a situation where a student does not work on a task initially because they have been allocated much more time than is actually needed to complete the task. However, they do not use the time wisely and finally the impending deadline triggers them to concentrate on the task, but in many cases the actual effort was more than foreseen resulting in the task being completed late. Another issue is Parkinson's law that states that all tasks will expand to fill the time allocated to them. So even if the task was worked on diligently and may be essentially complete, there is always a way to improve the result so the task is never submitted early. Also, since there is safety built into the task, there is much more incentive to multitask. Here we examine the effects of multitasking with a simple example of four projects. In this example, there is one resource that needs to complete four tasks, each related to a different project. Notice the difference in end times between the non-multitasking approach to task execution and the multitasking approach to task execution. So who benefits from the multitasking approach? Project 1 does not benefit. The yellow task finishes much later. Project 2 does not benefit. It also finishes much later. Project 3 does not benefit. It also finishes later. Finally, Project 4, theoretically, finishes when it otherwise would. Therefore, by multitasking, much delay has been introduced without any benefit. Unfortunately, task switching has overhead, so the multitasking result would be even worse than those illustrated here. Now, we move on to the solution. We have seen that localized risk management causes many problems. Fortunately, the principle of aggregation of risk can help solve many of these same problems. Aggregation of risk is the governing principle behind critical chain. Benefits of aggregating risk include a lower amount of protection is needed while a higher degree of protection can be achieved, which results in improved project performance. Aggregating risk is a more general approach to risk management. That is, during project planning, the goal is to protect the project at the project level and not necessarily at the task level. These concepts can be extended to multi-project implementations, which will result in maximizing throughput. During execution, this global approach to risk management will actually promote and encourage a team culture. Some of the ways that this will occur is via controlling the total amount of work in process, no multitasking work rules, task assignment prioritization, so that tasks most important to the overall project are worked on in the correct order. And finally, management by exception, which means allowing tasks and people working on those tasks to be left alone if sufficient progress is being made, and providing help in a non-judgmental way to those tasks that are running long for whatever reason.